Okay. Uh, thank you for staying so late. Um, when I was approached by Avinom about uh, three months ago, and he said, you know, you know, give a talk. I said, I don't know what, what to talk about. And he said, hey, memory intensive architecture. I said, that's fine. And uh, then he reminded me a couple of weeks ago that it's coming on. We were working on some related stuff, but never concentrate on the whole thing. And then uh, while flying uh, three days ago from Hong Kong to Tel Aviv, I started to work on uh, the presentation. And suddenly, everything fell together pretty nicely. So thank you, Avinam, for putting me in this uh, kind of pressure. Uh, but before we start, we'll start about something uh, more interesting. And this is a lemon squeezer. Um, and it will bring you to, I hope, to some kind of a thinking that probably uh, are related or non-related. You know, when you do, a, a, you squeeze a lemon, usually this is the shape that you are using. And we use it for many, many years. By the way, if you can see here, it was invented in 1896. So that's what I thought when I bought this stuff a long time ago, several years. And several years ago, I used it uh, this way, as we were taught or experienced in the past. And I enjoyed it very much. Unless one day I tried and I saw that what I did was wrong. Actually, you should use it this way. This way means this way. And suddenly you get about you know, one and a half ton more juice than you get when you put it in the kind of a right way. So try to think out of the box. Many times it brings you to a better solution. So this is what we're, we'll try to do here. By the way, I'm not going to present anything real uh, like uh, the, the, other, the previous presenter uh, gave, but really some thoughts about you know, future direction that we, we think to do. So uh, I'll, I'll start with, with the uh, processor, uh, process uh, trends. We'll talk about ends of Moore's law, on die memory uh, to the rescue. I'll talk about conventional ways and out of the box way, some example. And I'll try to look some uh, forward. You know, everybody knows this uh, graph, you know, going down, you know, and, and everybody talks about it will reach at around uh, seven nanometer, and probably this is more or less the end of Moore's law. Uh, uh, there are other people that think that, you know, we can go forever and increase the number of transistors, and everything will be wonderful, which I don't think so. And if you look at it, it a work that has been done by Stanford, collecting a lot, a lot of data. You know, we can see the transistors going up. Uh, we see the single thread performance of a processor is leveled off. We all know that. Frequency also is kind of leveled off. You know, we still get about 10% uh, process to process, or a little bit more. Power, definitely, we are at a power cap. We can just. Uh, 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 consume more than 120 watts and cool it also. The uh, number of cores we are going up, but actually if you look really what happened is that here, oh, you see this one, you know, it will level off someday. That means that we won't have more transistors. Uh, we see that about the single thread performance. We, we talked about the frequency and the power and the number of cores. And there's another one which is the dark silicon, which means that part of our silicon will be dark, meaning uh, we won't be able to use all the transistor all the time. But uh, this is in percentage. And this I drew just you know, a couple of hours ago. So the basic idea we all know that going forward with a large die, let's say 150 uh, millimeter square, we won't be able to use all the transistor all the time. And more and more out of this a, a, a number of transistor will be dark. Okay, so so what is the next step? Because it, it, it looks really bad. You know, everything starved and nothing to do. So this is a, here say to my limited knowledge and really uh, my limited uh, my knowledge is limited. So so when when Shaha came to me and said, how about Memristo? I said yes. You know, I've been, you know, my, my bachelor degree and master degree was in analog circuitry. And I said, okay, 
let's go a little bit to this kind of uh, semi-analog stuff. And later I said, no, let's, let's start to think what will be the impact of Memristo on architecture. And the impact should be, uh, I think, pretty big. So the basic idea that we'll have a logic in the future, hopefully, right? If we'll have logic, and above logic we'll have a lot of memory, it should change everything that we think about microarchitecture. How to build microprocessor. Because suddenly, we never experienced it. All, always we had the logic, and part of the logic was memory. And in order to get from a logical element to a memory element, we have to transverse you know, horizontally here. It's very close, capacity is, slow, is, 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 is low, and the access is, is, should be pretty fast. So the basic idea that you have a lot of memory above each logic cell you know, should change the way we think. Is it true? I don't know, but let's, let's think about it. So what I'm saying, yes, you know, it'll be a different way of thinking about implementation of architecture, of microarchitecture. And, and I'll show a couple of examples, but this is just you know, a, a very narrow point of view. I believe there will be many ideas that will bring us to a new concept of microarchitecture just because of the availability of a lot of memory everywhere. So, uh, 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 so first of all, the Memristo, you know, th there would be a l huge amount of memory cells everywhere, right? Above the logic, uh, it's very close to the logic, as I said. Uh, uh, there's no need power to keep it alive, and no leakage. That means for reactive systems, in, for instance, this is a reactive system in this moment. Nothing happening. I don't care, but suddenly I click here and it sh should react. But in the meantime, it leaks. Everything leaks here, right? All the memory cells. Suddenly I'll have elements that are not leaking. I can wait. Nothing will happen. I'm not losing energy. So that's, that's interesting, you know, from a point of view of elements that we carry, that we take with us everywhere. So, uh, uh, so what can be done with the with, with, with sea of memory cells you know, a, above logic. And these are two approaches. One is the simple one that, you know, most of the uh, people uh, uh, approach. is the conventional, let's go another step, evolutionary step to what exists today. And the other is out of the box. So definitely, I'll try to concentrate on out of the box, but we'll look at also some conventional ways of doing it. So this is the list of things that uh, I thought about, and we are working on some of them that are related to, uh, to this concept of having a lot of memory cells uh, everywhere. So we are talking about increase of on die uh, prediction structure. This is caches, branch prediction, uh, prefetch, all kind of FIFOs, and so on. Uh, we are talking about microprocessor, of course. We talk about the multiple different caches, the idea that we have a lot of memory. We can use a lot of structures, different structure, for every purpose that we, we, we should use. Uh, another idea, everything which is in uh, red should be kind of uh, out of the box and the uh, yellow is uh, you know, conventional. Uh, pipeline multi-threading will show some idea that actually started when we started to look at memristos and, and still we are working on it. So there's still a work in progress. Um, I want to talk about the lookup table that Tomer Morad brought up but uh, uh, probably there's a lot of uh, ideas to work out on this one. Instruction uh, reuse is something that can be now revived. It's an idea that has been uh, talked about uh, several years ago. And probably, you know, now when I have a lot of memory, I can use it uh, pretty nicely. Instruction queues, I won't talk about in graphics, many threads. The basic idea that today in graphics, you know, you have a lot of threads, but uh, the amount of memory for each one of the thread is very small, and probably you can improve performance by really increasing the memory. And computation at the memory level, and Shaha was talking about it, uh, uh, some of it. So first of all, let's talk about increased on die prediction structure like cache, branch prediction, prefetch, buffer, and so on. It may impact the power in, 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 in a good way, because if, if our prediction element like cache will be much better, then I'm not going outside of the die, meaning you know, I reduce the power. 
the same thing for, for branch prediction. The minute I have a better branch prediction, the probability that my performance will be better or for the same power, more or less. Uh, um, prefetch, you know, here, here I, I'm, I'm more reluctant because this one, maybe that will, you know, increase the power by prefetching a lot of data that I don't need later, you know, all kind of buffer and so on. So you have to relate everything to power today. Um, if we, we talk about increase on die cache size, and this is a work that we did with, with a, a, a student uh, of ours, uh, of Edith and Avinoam, uh, Tzvika Guz, who talked about uh, multi covers, multi thread. What is interesting about uh, this idea that uh, here we are talking about uh, multiple cores, we talk about cache, a, a common cache, and here we talk about the, the thread architecture state. And, and we're talking about an analytical model that actually looks very simple like that, that bring us to a solution of number of threads versus performance, which is super interesting. And if you look at that, you know, as, as uh, Avinoam call it, you know, uh, be aware of the valley, that the minute you increase the number of threads to cases when we have a lot of cash, you know, here uh, the cash per thread is relatively big. Uh, but when you continue to increase the number of thread, you may fall in the performance. And on the other side, there is the multi-thread, the, the, the NVIDIA guys or ATI or AMD guys that actually have a lot of threads. And, and here, you know, the power is pretty high because they go outside of the die and the performance increase. These two guys try to, you know, uh, both of them to go, the multi-thread to go to the left to in reduce the number of, of thread, while uh, 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 the multi-core guys are trying to increase the performance by getting more threads, but they will fall, both of them will fall into the valley. But if we have cash, look what happened. So this is a result that we have when you increase the cash, you know, suddenly the multi-core guys, which are in, in a danger of falling into this valley, is getting more and more performance until they reach the plateau, which is the maximum performance. So yes, Increasing the size of cache for conventional architecture can provide us with a pretty good performance uh, uh, in one aspect. The other aspect, which is even more interesting, is that if you increase the, the, the cache size, the performance power is going up. Because if I have a larger cache, I have heat rate, bigger, uh, higher heat rate, miss rate are, are less, and going to the outside world, which consume a lot of power, can be decreased. So this is uh, on, the, on the convention part. The other uh, uh, research that we did, by the way, with the same student, with Zvika, was uh, Nahalal, which is interesting when we talk of now about a, a lot of memory. Uh, uh, Nahalal, uh, uh, all of you know, uh, the houses of uh, 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 the people is here on this round, while everything uh, uh, common is in the center. Uh, by the way, the, the name Nahalal, to the concept came again from Avila. Uh, uh, so the center is all the common stuff that exists, and we said, how about building a microprocessor that looks like this? And if it looks like this, uh, we can have a memory or cache, which actually be used by data which is shared, to put it in. It's not a shared cache, which is uh, wrong. It should be a cache for shared data, while well, this is a cache for private data, and the processor are in the middle. So in this case, we said, hey, hooray, we can build, you know, we can build a round a, a, a processor, but definitely we can build it like that, and the results that we got were, were pretty good. When we are talking now, let's see, if we talk about a, a, a if we talk, if we know, we'll go now to the next step of Nahalal. <coughs> means, okay, we understand now we have a lot of cash. Forget about the idea that it has to be in the middle or in, on, on, on the side. It's all above the logic. So you should think differently. And then we, have to, we can think about all kinds of caches, which we started to work on some of them, which is, let's say, you know, space-wise, we are talking about at the top instead of on the side, right? But we can build caches for special needs. For example, how about building a cache for only the single instruction multiple data uh, uh, element, the, the data. 
meaning the minute we are using a large amount of data, <coughs> right, let's keep it in a special cache. You know, let's be, the floating point can be in another cache, you know, task-related cache and so on. So the basic idea that we have as, mu as many uh, memory cells as we, we, we want, or if you, even if we don't want, then we can use it for all kind of ways, and this is just a, a initial ideas. Um, if you look at, 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 at another idea that, that uh, we draw related to these uh, memory cells is the, the pipeline multi-threading. Uh, if you look at switch on event, this is switch on event. Uh, the concept si switch on event actually works in, in a way that you have one thread is running, well, this thread is stalling because of something, you bring the next thread, and if this one is stalling, then you bring the next one, and so on. So the basic idea that you, when, when, this, uh, uh, when a thread is executed nicely, you, d y you, 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 you properly deal with it, but the minute it, it stalls, you, you bring another thread. So you have many threads that actually cover the stall of the first thread. And this is the concept of switch on event. And we decided to, to, to look at, at, at a similar case. Um, the basic idea came when, when I drove in, 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 uh, uh, in the Galilee one day, and there was a line of cars you know, going uh, to Tomei uh, Golani, uh, and you know, there's a, lo a lot of cars driving there, and, and suddenly there was a truck, you know, <coughs> at the beginning of this line or queue, and suddenly the truck just went down to the uh, side and let everybody pass. And I said, "Whoa, this is really efficient." You know, the basic idea: the truck continue to move. You know, while we all pass the, the truck, and then it comes back and continue. So we said, "Hey." That can be applied to, to microarchitecture. So we said, let's look at a pipeline. Okay, the pipeline is the queue of, line of, of cars that we have. And it, it, what we do today, if you look, you know, the, there's a, a instruction coming in, and, and of course the pipeline is working. Uh, we, we push instruction by instruction. And then when there is a stall suddenly, what do we do? The stall can be going to memory. You know, uh, some stall that actually we are taking uh, 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 for, for a long time, so we have to do what? Switch on event. So this is what we do. So we take out uh, 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 this, uh, uh, we keep the stall uh, instruction here, and I handle it. And in the meantime, I'm bringing uh, the next uh, 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 instruction of the next thread into the pipe. And then when, when it comes, then, uh, uh, of course, you know, I can switch again and so on. So this is the basic idea. What you see here, what happened, what I did here, the minute there's a stall here, I, I, what I did to all of these instructions, I just threw them away. So it was a waste of both execution and a waste of, 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 of time. So in a sense, what we did, we cleaned the pipe, we took this one, as, 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 and, and deal with it, handle it, and then we start a new one. So in a sense, I lost performance and I lost power because, you know, I had to flush the pipe in a sense. Uh, so we said, okay, let, let's not flush the pipe, right? Let, let's not kill the, the truck, but let him continue running. So, so this is the concept when we said, okay, this is the pipe. In a minute, we have, we'll, we'll see what, what is happening. So the first instruction coming in, second, <coughs> third, and so on. And we came to the same point as before. And we say, OK, number two is tall. And what we are saying, let's do something at there. We'll take, actually, we'll take care of the stall instruction. And in the meantime, we'll ramp up or we'll pull up all the content of all the instructions to a memory which is above. And this is the memory stores, why right? we have as many cells as we want. So let's keep the state of all the, the stages in the pipe, right? And in the meantime, I can get in uh, uh, the next instruction, or next instruction uh, a stream. And then when, when there is the end of the stall, you know, I can replace it. It's working. And I replace it and can continue execute. By the way, the foils were done. By Shacha. So. <laughs> ah, not by Shacha? By whom? 
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so anyhow, so the basic idea, yes, we are just starting to, to work on it, but, and, and we, when you go and look at the analysis, that said, okay, what is the performance impact that you have versus the first case that I showed that you have to flush the pipe versus the second one that actually you just replace those, then you, you can see that, you know, if you look at number of threads versus the IPC instruction per cycle, you know, on a regular case, we'll get something like that, meaning until we have five threads, we are getting this performance, right? And we stall there because of the flash uh, that we have. And here we can go with this concept idea, pipeline multi-threading, we can get better performance. We have to take care of it to understand exactly what is the power implication and what is the circuit application that you have and what is the overhead. So we are just at the beginning, but at least it was really inspired by the idea that we have a lot of, of uh, memory cells. Uh, we'll see where it will go, but we were happy. We don't care if, if the results will be astonishing, but it's something new. And we believe that in this case, there will be some cases of application that will love to have it and get better performance. Uh, okay, the other was a lookup table when, when we talked a couple of days ago about uh, a potential application. And this is Tomer Morad uh, said that how about using more intensively lookup table for all kind of computation, which is, should be very interesting uh, uh, to uh, evaluate and uh, research. Um, the other instruction reviews are what we call memorization. Um, this basic idea uh, 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 was started by, by Soy Guri from University of Wisconsin uh, many years ago. But the basic idea that if you have a computational entity and you know exactly what is the inputs, including the state of this entity, right, and you know what was before. So if you have, if you have those inputs, you get this output. If you keep the, the information about these inputs somewhere in memory, and the next time you encounter this uh, computational entity, you compare the inputs and they are identical, that means that the output will be identical. So you don't have to do the computation. Think about it. You just have to compare. You compare, if you compare, and you remember the output, you don't have to do the computation. It means that you save a lot of power, right? Not talking about the speed. And how many times we're using in our uh, 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 machines, you know, the same thing again and again. All, a lot of calls that we have in our program uh, actually have the, exactly the same inputs. So why to calculate it again and again? And if we l use machine learning, you know, to think about, oh, this entity is going to be exactly with the same input that it was before to try to predict. Then we can bypass and, and, and uh, actually say, OK, let's uh, 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 predict that this will be output and continue without committing, of course. So this is one, 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 one of the examples that the minute I'll have a lot of memory, I can keep all those elements you know, or, or data at the top. And the minute I have this call or computational entity, I just have to compare. If the, if the comparison is, is, is OK, I can go with the last result that was bef before. By the way, it, it's connected very nicely to, to the computation at the memory level, which Shachar was presenting before. And the basic idea, the minute we'll be able uh, to put the memory cells together with logical cells, then everything is very simple. Now, think about compare. It's, uh, the simplest thing that exists. You just have a, a, a long line of data and another, randomly, another long line of data, and you can compare both of them and say if they are equivalent. So in a very fast manner, you can compare the ABC with the new ABC and make a decision that the output is there. So, so the idea that uh, we can combine logic and memory together in memory store is very attractive. OK, so, so, so looking forward, um, I believe that you know, what I wanted to show is that the beginning of, in the beginning of the foils is that uh, the main problem that we see today, that we are hitting a big wall. And, and uh, a lot of people said, 
for a long time that the wall is coming. And um, as one of who was inside this area, uh, I couldn't believe. I said, no way, you know, I have enough time, you know, you know, after me, everything. And, and the wall is here. The wall big time is here. It's big time re related to frequency, to number of transistors, to power, definitely power. Power should be first. And, and, and we have to deal with it. So you can't just ignore it and, and say, yeah, let's solve it in one way or the other. And I think every technology, new technology that will come, we have to look at it as the savior of our uh, problems. Not all of the problems, but at least some of them. And I think Memristo will be one of them. So, uh, uh, so the opportunity uh, to have a step function in, in performance power exists in this Memristo, I believe. Uh, performance improvement also, you, we can use elements in order to improve performance by using this memory stuff. Uh, the basic idea that, you know, that um, we are talking is, is that, uh, uh, you know, my cell, if I take it out, I want, you know, uh, if you look at a cell that we have today, this is huge. If you can remember uh, um, about uh, 10 years ago, or if a little bit more, you know, our cell phone was something, if you remember, was a big one, was this. I believe that in 10 years, we look at our uh, mobile device, the cell, and we say, that's terrible. It's huge, right? So we'll have devices which much, much smaller, and we'll keep them, I don't know, everywhere. And, and, and I believe that the most important element of these devices will be that they will have to be, you know, sub uh, 10 milliwatt uh, uh, devices. And what better uh, is, is a memristo that doesn't use any power, when it's not needed, and it's reactive. The minute I need, okay, I'll take the data and use it. Um, I think that, that uh, 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 energy saving in a reactive system, that's what I said. And, and the basic idea that it's new, it really attracts me at least. You know, it's something new to work, and definitely in, in academia environment is, is really the best. Thank you. Any questions before everybody goes to sleep? <laughs> not here, not here. Yeah. By the way, in, in, in my research in general, what I'm trying to do is to um, ignore the gravity. What I mean is that when I'm coming to a new idea, I try to ignore everything else and try to think freely, right? There's no gravity. Because if I start to add all the problems that exist in Memristo, I will never stop, right? There are a lot of problems there. But the basic idea, first of all, I would like to see if it makes sense at all, right? If there is, later I'll start as an engineer, slowly, slowly try to, to build together. So the answer to your question, we didn't start. Any more questions? Luckily, I'm not working for today. I used to, <laughs> right? <laughs> but now I'm working for really, not tomorrow, but you know, 10 days from now, uh, 10 years from now, not 10 days. <laughs> and, and, and I believe that the basic idea, I have to look, uh, try to find, you know, a, 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 in a trajectory point of view, that I'll reach something that will be 10 years from now. So I believe that the, these guys will do the restore that will be non-volatile, wonderful, will work with no endurance of infinity. For story. But you'll know in 10 years. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Thank you very much.
חג שמח. מה? חג שמח. חג שמח לכולם. So thank you to all the speakers, the audience, and a big thank you for, to the organizers, and I'm looking at you, Avinoam. Thanks.